retail therapy time, we're going to do a Threadripper build, 24 cores. Aero D, I'm going to do something a little unusual. We're building it in a Corsair 5000D. Because I like what Corsair's done to be creative with the plastic and the metal. I actually picked all this up at Micro Center. And I built the uh, 5000D system, uh, built in the case in, in a system that we gave away. And I really liked it, and I wanted to revisit it. And I've also got some some other hardware we're going to revisit, like our Intermax AIO. This one is a couple of years old now, so we'll see how it does. My preference is probably on air cooling at this point, because the Arctic Freezer 4UM gets it done, especially when we're talking about 24 and 32 cores. But we're going to try it in this system, see how it goes. Uh, let's get started with the build. For the rest of the build, I was really split between G-Skill Memory and Kingston Beast. The Beast Fury. The Beast Fury memory is really good stuff, and it seems really stable in this platform, especially when we're talking about eight memory channels. So I'm probably going to go with Kingston Beast Fury. Also picked up an Asus Tough Power Supply 1000 watts because it was on fire sale at Micro Center. I don't know why. The, the Gigabyte Aero D motherboard, it's the least of the TRX-50 motherboards, and yet it'll get the job done, and it's got built-in Thunderbolt. It's the only TRX-50 board that has Thunderbolt built right in, although you can get Thunderbolt compatibility, USB 4, PCIe tunneling on WRX90. It's not strictly... Thunderbolt is an Intel technology. This cannot be called Thunderbolt, but Thunderbolt is a PCIe tunneling technology. USB 4 can be a PCIe tunneling technology. You can get that on Threadripper, believe it or not. Let's get building! I really like all the extra Velcro straps. These are true straps the Corsair includes in their case. Along with all the other screws and everything else. Standoffs, you name it. Now the NVIDIA peripheral cable that came with this power supply is uh, the 600 watt variety, the 600 watt 15 pin variety, but it comes with a, another more interesting cable, which is the NVIDIA style connector, 600 watts, to dual 8 pin power. It's a very nice premium braided cable. You can definitely tell that ASUS is doing something premium. Another interesting thing that ASUS has done is that your power cable, so the power supply has the NVIDIA style 16 pin connector, and you can go to the standard NVIDIA style 16 pin breakout or you can get the PCIe power connectors, like the large, you can get two 8-pin or one smaller 16-pin, but there's only the single connector on the power supply, so you gotta pick. You want this cable for Team Red, or this cable for power supplies for Team Green, because it's 16-pin on both ends. See, it's, a, it's an interesting situation. This is definitely a power supply where ASUS did not consider if you were gonna run, like, dual 4070s. I guess SLI, it really is that dead. Is he crazy to use an ASUS power supply in a Corsair case? It, it doesn't matter. It's fine. Listen, you know Corsair has done something right if I can make the cables look that good, as lazy as I am. Here's our more or less complete build in the Corsair 5000D. I've got to add a uh, Phantom Gaming 7900 XT GPU. XT, not XTX. The pricing is changing recently because of new GPUs and everything like that. And Azrock's got a cool little AI tool that works on their GPUs. They've got a little GPU AI helper thingy that was just updated at the end of January 2024. So I want to show you that. But before we do that, remember I mentioned the cooler in this. Yes, the, the Arctic 4UM may be a better choice, but check this out. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's what happens when the fans age. To be sure, if you contact them, they will warranty it, but as it sort of ramps and lowers the fans, it's not amazing. It's, it's okay. Now this might sound like I'm just doing this to warn you off of buying an Intermax cooler, and no, yes and no. This is what you get. It's actually not terrible as far as AIOs go. You could definitely get better, but it has insane cooling capacity. Like if you're going to do PBO, this is far going to outrun an Arctic 4UM. But an Arctic 4UM is a zero maintenance option that also isn't wildly expensive. I don't know, I wish the Intermax cooler were better, I wish the fans that it was bundled with were better. But I can't complain about Intermax's warranty because I actually bought three of these and they have warranty replaced all three of them over the years. Five year warranty, most of them about two, two and a half years in. So you can get a better cooler. A couple of years in if you're willing to go through the headache again they're doing much better than they were and it is an incredible AIO for Threadripper. See it's not hard to replace a fan I really don't know why more AIO manufacturers don't make a custom cold plate for Threadripper. It would be awesome! 
as awesome as this because this cooler does an amazing job of cooling when it's not gunked up. You see, this 32 core Threadripper system is going to go head to head against this 24 core Threadripper system. They're very, very similar systems, but we're going to take a look at software development on both Linux and Windows because 24 cores versus 32 cores, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference, but some of the numbers I'm getting back, very surprising because, you know, 24 cores, 32 cores, 24 core can clock a little higher, you have fewer cores. But the 32 core can also clock high, but then also you take into account PBO. So I needed something that would give me a little bit of an overclocking headroom, and my Arctic 4UM is in the 32 core system, which is uh, based around our ASRock workstation board, and this one is based around our ROD. So get subscribed and stay tuned for that video, or help me out in the level one forums if you have any other anecdotal evidence. Probably gonna do a Path of Titans revisit as well, because Threadripper 7000 is really interesting when it comes to Unreal development. Now, Azrock's AI Quick Set is a neat little utility. It'll help you download Shark and Automatic 111. Well, a version of Automatic 111 that's designed for AMD GPUs. That's an important distinction. Um, and some other utilities. So you can run Stable Diffusion and uh, have a couple of different ways of downloading models from Hugging Face to generate images. Like, it's a whole rabbit hole that you can go down. To be sure, Azrock's utility is designed for Azrock cards, but you don't have to have an Azrock card in order to use Rockham or Stable Diffusion or any of the other utilities that this goes with. If you want to set up Shark directly yourself, you can. There's just a couple of more steps involved. Somebody might have written a guide for some of this stuff on the Level 1 forums. You can check it out. Whether you're running CUDA, even. It'll, it's, it's, it's a thing. But AMD is trying to get more of their gaming GPUs up and running with machine learning because AMD's data center GPUs and their uh, gaming GPUs, there's some, there's some rhyming in the architecture, but they are not the same silicon the way that it is on uh, the NVIDIA side. And so this is sort of a fun thing that ASRock has done. And also the update at the end of January fixed a lot of the stuff that I was tripping over over earlier versions for Windows. So definitely check that out. And if you're into Linux, check out the Level 1 Linux channel because we're going to have both of these systems, the 24 core and the 32 core, up and running with Quickset AI for Linux. Azeroth is doing special stuff for Linux? Yes, because things generally run better there when we're talking about machine learning and everything else. I mean, even the Windows subsystem for Linux gives you access to all kinds of really interesting AI stuff that's not otherwise there, but that is gonna have to wait for the next video. I'm Woodless Level 1, I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums.